What's up, Devils? j Dog back with another goddamn video. And today's video, we're going to pick up where we left off yesterday because there were still some uh, fucking questions. Seems like more towards the goddamn bottom of the video, there was actually some goddamn uh, question marks as opposed to the top. I'm like, where the fuck are all the goddamn questions? But with 125 comments or whatever the hell I said there was, um, there would be some goddamn question there. So we'll see what the fuck else is left on here. Saw some question marks, so I kept on it. And then uh, if nothing else, we'll raw dog our way to the next goddamn video, which I'm not even sure what the hell it is. We have to just go next in line. So this question I saw uh, from Carl How Satan. I'm pretty sure I did a question for you before. It looks kind of familiar. Hey, J Dog, goddamn it! Question one. I had two questions. Fuck yeah, even better. Do you think it's cool or not bands who rep themselves wearing their own band shirts on stage slash in photos? I sometimes think it's a little silly, but at times it makes sense. Some get away with it more than others. Like for example, it works well for Midnight. Um, so first off, does uh, Midnight ever wear fucking their own band shirts on stage and shit? I never know. I guess I never paid attention. J Jamie just wears the black leather and shit, black leather jacket. And... I don't know. Maybe the other guys do. I, I guess I never really thought about paying attention. Uh, but it's funny, the, uh, band shirts on stage. I remember like kind of having an opinion about this when I was younger. And I think maybe me, Erica Chase talked about it. Like maybe as a teenager's going to shows, maybe it's just in my mind, but I'm pretty sure we talked about it a little bit after a show. Once thinking it's kind of annoying, like, what's all these bands wearing their own fucking shirts on stage? Like, the fuck? You don't like other bands? I kind of still share that same, uh, that same, um, opinion, but it's changed a little bit. I think on stage, yeah, that looks kind of fucking ridiculous. Like, what are you doing? Like, you don't like other bands and, like, just, I don't know. It's just, it kind of looks fucking tacky. However, and it's like, kind of like you said, I think there's some, um, times it makes sense to wear their own wear their own band shirts. I think what this change was was me being a fan of Rich Piana. He all he did was wear everywhere, every photo, anywhere you see him, anything. All he wore was his own company shirts. You know the Love It Kill It shirts, the Five Percent Nutrition, and it's like from a sense, it's like, well, I'm a walking billboard. I'm an advertisement. I'm advertising my company. Why would I advertise somebody else's? I get it to that degree. So like outside of the uh the stage. Maybe like like you have here in the grocery store and shit. And if, if you're trying to get your band kind of known, people ask, "Oh, what's your shirt say?" You know what I mean? It makes sense if Incantations wearing an Incantation shirt. You know, I'm sure John McAtee specifically doing the, the uh, band is a business now. I'm sure he's you know still likes the music and passionate about doing it. But at the same time, I'm sure he's doing it mostly as a business, and I I don't blame him. I would do the same goddamn thing. You know, fucking forty years later, how long he's been fucking doing it? So I would get it from that sense, but. I can't think of any time where Cannibal Corpse was wearing Cannibal Corpse shirts on stage. They're always wearing George. I've always seen he's wearing a, like a Black Witchery shirt or Centurion shirts. You know, advertising fucking bands they likes. When I met him, he's for, for the first time I met him, he's wearing a Diabolic shirt, shit like that. I always thought that was more respectable. It's like, oh, bands he likes, and he's kind of trying to help them out. You know, uh, for eyeballs on them. The only time I see Cannibal Corpse wearing a Cannibal Corpse shirt, and then correct me if I'm wrong, there's other times. Which made sense. I would have done the same thing. Was an Ace Ventura. Chris Barnes is wearing a uh, Cannibal Corpse logo shirt. I would have done the same goddamn thing as advertisement. Like so, because people are like, "What the fuck is this?" So kind of like for marketing and shit like that outside of the stage. For I get it in that sense. I, and uh, like even myself, like for a while there, I never wore a Hell's Headbanger shirt. It's kind of like why I'm not, I like the designs, and it's kind of like it's a business. It's my business. Why not advertise? And there's been times it's actually helped out. Like I told the story and fuck when I was in Arizona or whatever. I was out in Jerome. The guy, what the hell's headbangers? And it's like, yeah, who, yeah, I'm surprised you heard of those guys. You know, let them know that it's, you know, my company and uh, end up doing wholesales and shit from us. You know, holy fuck, you know, you give me a contact, swap, you know, exchange fucking, you know, emails, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so it has worked out times for just never thought anything. It's just wearing a goddamn hoodie walking around. So it definitely makes sense in that, in, in, in that regard. But especially if it was like, I don't know. I'll use them as a gang because it's just a band blowing up. It's nothing against them personally. But if it was a band like 200 Stab Wounds, I'm not saying they do this. If they were walking around with just 200 Stab Wounds shirts on it, it and, and that's all they ever wore, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Because from what I understand, they're young bucks as is. And especially when you're young and just getting into this. I remember myself when I was, I mean, you, you were you were excited about hearing other bands and checking shit out and collecting you know records and CDs and buying new shirts from bands you liked. It's kind of like... If they were to do, I'm not saying they do that. They very well may not. I'm just saying if they were to, it rubbed me the wrong way in a sense. Because you, you, it's almost like you're just jumping in this for almost like a potential business, which I mean, pff, 
wrong goddamn ministry to jump into if you're just jumping into it to make money in business. Not saying anyone's doing that. It'd be kind of dumb. I mean, I would get into something that probably a little bit more remarkable you can make money on, but it just it just comes off that way. So for the most part, I think it's cheese ball and fucking wouldn't do it. But in the sense, the uh, times that I told you, I could definitely understand it and make sense then. Well, yeah. Incantation, don't wear a goddamn incantation shirt on fucking stage. Wear something else. Outside, if you're walking and doing Walmart, doing your own grocery shopping, wear an incantation shirt. Totally makes sense. And not only does it make sense, probably a good idea. <laughs> Question two, which band or members of bands did you get pissed off someone ragging on when you almost want to fight? For example, I get so angry when anyone rags on Ozzy. Uh, nobody. Actually, I literally don't care what anybody's opinion on shit. You know how everybody says... I don't care what anybody thinks, but literally, like, I can almost count on one hand how many times, if anybody, I would say, I can think of a couple, maybe, maybe someone like King Folly or somebody, um, I don't get the vibe that he gives a fuck what other people think, um, I mean, I, I know him pretty well, but I don't know him that, that well, so maybe he does in certain instances, but most people, they say that, and they're completely full of shit, and I, I mean, 99.9999999999999 tenths of fucking people that say they're full of shit. Including all you guys watching this. You probably all care to some extent. Literally, and that's because it doesn't make me a tough guy or nothing. I literally don't care about what people think whatsoever. Never did. To the point where it's almost like kind of like maybe a little weird or sociopathic. Like, I don't care about people's opinions on shit. Like, literally, like, I'm the type of person, <clears throat> if I was to go get a tattoo, I don't ask other people, hey, what do you think of this? Or should I get this? I just put it in my mind, oh, I like that. I'm going to get it. I don't get anybody's opinion, not friends, not families, nobody. I just go do it. If I'm thinking about trying something out or do something anything, I don't ask opinions. I just read up on it and make up my own mind, do it. If a new movie comes out, I don't ask reviews. I don't ask opinions. Don't even want to hear it. Don't care. New bands and shit come out. I don't ask other people. I mean, if it's something that I think somebody might like, I'll let them know about it. Or if we're talking about the topic, you know, if I'm shooting the shit with fucking Don or Jamie or something, like, hey, what'd you think of that one or whatever? Just because, you know, you're talking about it. But like to get an opinion to sway myself with what someone thinks, I, I just don't fucking care. Like I don't even, for I, I can't even force myself to care. You know what I mean? That's when people throw their opinions out. Should I just say something negative about me in the comments? I, it doesn't bother, it literally does not bother me whatsoever. Um, no idea why. Um, but everyone else is fucking full of shit because literally it bothers them. I just, I just don't care. So like if you say anything about bands, I, bands, people say it about family members, I, I like, it doesn't bother me. I don't care. Myself. Um, Dumbo J Dog, fucking Balden J Dog, fucking whatever. I, I, I don't care. So, certainly about band members or bands, you can say all the shit I like sucks dick and they're a bunch of posers and that's that's the trendy shit. Pantera is the real crap, goddammit. It just doesn't bother me. I just, I just, yeah, I, I mean, that maybe not even like that's not even saying that as like a cool thing or a tough guy thing. Maybe it's not even a good thing. Probably makes me a bit of a fucking weirdo and maybe a little bit fucked in the head, right? So, I'm not saying that as bragging rights. I'm just being honest. Like, it just, yeah, people's opinions, I really don't give a fuck. Never did. Uh, Layla Lover 90, if you won the big time lottery tomorrow, funny you say that, man, I've thought about this many times. Would you still continue Hell's Headbangers? What fun, crazy thing would you do with the money, like a private hemorrhage concert? So let's define the big time lottery. If it was like after taxes take home $100 million or more, that's what I consider the back. That's what you took home after paying your taxes, et cetera, whatever you pay, 30% or whatever the hell it is. Um, that's what I consider the big time. Because if it was $10 million, if I won $10 million take home, would I still do Hell's Headbangers? Yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, now, I would probably retire pretty early, and I'd want it a little cushier. But um, I think I might change up like my job description a little bit, talk to Eric and Chase, maybe probably take a pay cut. Hey, I want to just do this, this, and that. I'm not coming to this warehouse every day. Negotiate something. But I'd still want to be some part of it because, like, what if I stop? What the hell else am I gonna do all day? You know, yeah, I go to the gym and shit, but what the fuck? I don't think all goddamn day. So, um, what you know, what do you do? Sit around watching the idiot box? I don't have too much uh, outside fucking metal and bodybuilding. You know, working out shit. I don't have any other interests to be honest with you. So I can't really force myself to get into other shit. So what am I gonna do, right? Having said that, so with the multi fucking big time lottery, same kind of scenario. But what I would do is I'd want to move out to Vegas. And I want to do something kind of remote. I'd probably still, I would want to do emails, probably still do these videos because I, I enjoy doing them. And maybe like do like one of the other departments, like maybe like ordering the merchandise, doing all the wholesales and shit like that. But definitely would want no part of going to the warehouse every day. Uh, I'd be like, I'm done with this. Not do, I don't, don't need to. And I'd be fine with like Eric Chase. Well, this is so unfair. You know, you're only working like 15, 20 hours a week, 25 hours a week. Just cut my pay in half or a quarter or whatever. You know what I mean? I would just do it 
more so, what do you mean for the money at that point? It's $100 million. What the fuck? You don't need any more. You can put 10 lifetimes on that. Unless you're a complete dumbass buying yachts and stupid shit, which I wouldn't. Um, would it be about the money? It'd be kind of like staying busy, but I wouldn't want to do it for free either. So I would do that that way, just extra money and whatever, just secure my future and fucking, if I kick the bucket early, that way Lindsay set up for luck and life, et cetera, et cetera, you know? So things like that. But that's what I would, yeah, if there's a mega million, I would do it, but it'd be on a much smaller uh, scale work-wise. And uh, all, all time the goal is I want to move to Vegas anyway. So I'd want to do something remote, remote from there. So that is what I would do. But I think I still would do these videos though. And they'd be, maybe I'd buy a camera then. <laughs> so I'd be like, <laughs> A camera, but like, and I would just hire someone too that went out there. Just, I'll buy this, you motherfucker. You're going to show me how to use this fucking thing and rip it to my computer, et cetera, as easy as possible. Because I don't want to be dicking around all damn day figuring, because I, I hate fucking trying to figure that shit out. But uh, I like doing these videos, so I think I still would do videos and shit too. Even if I was fucking, uh, oh yeah, what do you say? Uh, what fun, crazy thing would you do with the money? Like a private hemorrhage concert? If I had that much money, I would do shit like that. What I would do, maybe not a private concert, I would probably contact hemorrhage and be like, hey guys, when are you playing Spain next? Or can you play in Spain? Or maybe do another show at the morgue. I don't know if you guys would know, know that. What was that? Uh, early 2000s, they played a show in the morgue. I'll pay for everything. Here's fucking $10,000. Um, let me know. I'm going to fly out and come to it. You don't even got to come here. I'll come to Spain. Uh, Lindsay wants to go to Spain for years now anyways. I, I'd like to go to Spain. Uh, it's not my number one country I want to see, but I'd definitely like to go to Spain. Um, it is a country I would like to go to. And, uh, that I would, that is something I would do. Yeah. Fly to fucking Spain, tell Hemmers to fucking play. Let's do something really cool. Maybe like I said, on a morgue again, all expenses on me. Cause at that point, even if it's 10, 15, 20 grand, you got a hundred million dollars in the bank. <laughs> Fuck. That's like a night out at a fucking restaurant. Who gives a shit? I mean, shit, you'd be on a hundred million dollars. If you're to put it in type of type of, uh, interest based account or whatever, you make more than 10 grand a fucking month off just the interest alone. You know what I mean? Life Eternal, who do you think is the most metal dude in the scene? <laughs> I don't mean like cringy, yeah, bro, metal types. I mean somebody who eats, breathes, and sleeps metal. My votes are for Fenris and Kate and Pena from Hyrax. Thoughts? Um, I disagree on both of those because my look is a little different what I consider the most metal. Uh, I met Kate a couple times. I Kate's a super fucking cool guy. Like him a lot. Uh, from what I met, anyways, he was cool, but maybe he's a dick behind the scenes, but didn't seem like it came off as very, very friendly when I met him. And I like Hyrax a lot, but I don't consider, like, for I'll just use him as an example. For example, the reason I don't consider him is because he likes pretty much stuff of his era and older stuff. That doesn't make you the most metal, you know what I mean? And that's this is nothing against him either. Like, for example, I don't put myself in this fuck, I don't put myself in the most metal category, although I could be in a I guess more metal category because I kind of like across the board. You'll, I'll explain why what I consider the most metal. The people I consider the most metal are people you haven't heard of. They're people that have been following or at least like stuff from basically, let's say from Black Sabbath up to shit of today, even stuff of today, and they you, you have to still be buying records and CDs. None of this I download shit. None of this I only listen to Possessed and stuff I grew up on. That's not the most metal guy. That's just That's just not. You're still living the metal lifestyle. You go to shows, collect records, collect CDs. You wear fucking metal shirts, not Amber Crabby and Fish. And you see a guy in fucking blue jeans and what, what the fuck is this guy going on a soccer game? That's not metal. That's not the metal lifestyle. That, I don't, I'm not going to say that makes you a poser or anything like that, but you're not the, if we're talking about the most metal person in the scene, you got to, you got to fit the bill. You know what I mean? So who would I say fit the bill? One person that comes to my mind, uh, I'm, a person that's definitely up there is a guy here in Ohio, Ohio called Mike Hughes. He's, I've been, I mean, I've known Mike for several years because he has a huge fucking collection. He goes to every fucking show and he still legitimately just loves the music. Um, him doesn't look like he doesn't like uh, uh, wear too many English banters, but I mean, he doesn't look like the most. He almost look, his appearance, though, he looks like he'd be more of a, in the punk scene. So he, he would have checked that box, but still, as far as interest of what he likes, he'd check the box. Another guy, my buddy Dan Murrow, he's, Dan's probably more of the, he's more up to date as far as the modern shit than Mike is, and he likes all the stuff. He, so Mike and like Dan, like I said, they like from past to current. And Dan's so, I mean, fuck, Dan comes down and buys, 
He builds up every week. He orders every single week from us, and he basically has a fucking bin. By the way, don't ask me if you get a bin. Dan's the only guy that gets a fucking bin. <laughs> he loads it up and fucking picks up like once every two months. You know what I mean? Load, just a shitload of stuff buys. So he's still collecting. The only check mark he doesn't check is he doesn't go to shows, really. Because uh, <laughs> he hates more people than I do, <laughs> which is funny. And I kind of actually like that about him. But nonetheless, so he, but he, he does. He does go to shows. But uh, so far, those two guys... And there's a few customers of ours that I've never met, but I think they would check that category because they order all the time, and it's across the board from regular heavy metal, thrash metal, death metal, black metal, grindcore. They're ordering it all. You can tell it's not for resale. Guys that are doing that. So if you're into it, yeah, yeah, you got you got to hit those boxes. You can't just be like, I like the '80s style, and I cut off there. And anything after 2002 is meh. You're not the most metal guy ever. I'm not saying you're a poser. I'm not saying you're not into metal. That doesn't make you the most metal guy ever, though. Um. And you got to kind of like match the lifestyle. So I don't know if there's any one person that come in my mind, but I would say Dan and Mike, they come in my mind as far as like, I put it to you, they're more, they're way more in the metal than fucking uh, Fenner is and fucking Kate. And I can guarantee that as far as just into it, listening to it, but keeping up on it, collecting it, living the lifestyle. I mean, for sure they are. I mean, that's not taking away anything from Kane or Fenner is not, not whatsoever. I mean, they're metal icons in the scene. Um, you know, all you guys watch them, I mean, like I said, Mike and Dan, nobody, they're not going to know who they are unless people that live around here, you know what I mean? So, but yes, yeah, usually the guys you never heard of, and I guarantee there's probably some guy in fucking Germany or Switzerland or some shit who's the most, who probably is the most metal guy on the fucking face of the planet, uh, probably blows everybody away that you never even fucking heard of, you know what I mean? Uh, one person, I'll give a shout out, and he lives in uh, Belgium, and I know he, he crossed my mind, never met him, he's been ordering it for years, I guess he's the guy that drew the uh, Morbid logo too for the band Morbid. He's the one that drew the logo. His name's Gunther Cross. Um, I get the vibe. He's one of the most fucking metal guys out there. Nobody knows who he is. Ordered for years and orders across the board. Gore grind likes it. Black metal likes it. Thrash metal likes it. Heavy metal likes it. Buys it all. Um, he crossed my mind too. Tom Foley, would Hell's Headbangers ever sign a crust band? Somebody replied to him. I know they didn't. Why does it say one reply? But there's nothing in here. Yeah, if there's something good, I mean, doesn't Scum Ripper kind of fit in that category? Crust fucking thrash kind of stuff, you know what I mean? But uh, just up here, I mean, yeah, I don't see why not. I mean, we did the Vlad Vladimir's and shit, and that's like not really metal. That's kind of like, you know, horror punk. And we did High Spirits, and I don't know, is High Spirits even metal? It's kind of more like hard rock heavy metal. So it's not like we've done anything out of the realm. Um, so yeah, something was good. It came along and. I mean, Necrophil too, aren't they kind of like in the crust? I'm not going to say they're a crust band, but don't they, they kind of they fit in that fan base niche. So it's that, what I'm getting at is not a wrong possibility, you know what I mean? So sure. Let's see, we should probably get one more. So yeah, there were still questions. Fuck, we're still on the same goddamn video, Devil. So uh, Ricky Jones, Daily Devil's Questions. He's always got some really good ones. New album or live shows? Depends who it is. Um, generally speaking, there's a band I love and I like every album by, I would say, new album. But if you're to say Repulsion, I'd rather them come to Cleveland and see them than do a new, new, a new album. Like, I don't want Repulsion to do a new album because it's just, there's no way it's going to sound anything like Horrified. I highly doubt it. So it'd be kind of a letdown. Um, so it would depend who it is. Um, You know, at this point, too, kind of like Black Sabbath, it was with Ozzy or whatever. I'd, I'd go. I'd go to a show. I'm not going to pay $300, but I want good front row seats. And uh, I prefer that over a new album. Although I did like that 13 album, the number 13, which just came out a while ago now, but I did enjoy that. But I speak, if I was to hear Black Sabbath, it's going to do another album in 2023. I'm like, oh, okay, this is probably going to suck. Granted, that's what I thought 13 was going to be, too, but I actually enjoyed it. So, but a live show would be cool, I, you know. So it kind of depends on the, uh, uh, the band. And then I guess bands like Immolation. Live show or new album? Honestly, either or. I'd be okay with either or. Um, yeah, flip a coin. Wouldn't matter to me at this point. I like both. Love, love, love. Would go to the show, and uh, even their last album, I, I liked it. You know, it was good. I own it. Bought the LP.
somebody asked me if I've ever grown a fat crop of weed. I don't smoke weed. I don't like weed. I can't stand the smell of weed. So, no. Do one more goddamn question. You know, shout out. I kind of answered some of the quickies since we're at the fucking 20 minute mark. Human brisket, J Dog, do you like Butcher ABC? Yes, I do. Butcher ABC from fucking uh, Japan. It's that general surgery, I guess, carcass kind of worship. Don't know everything by them. No kind of the early releases. Kind of lost touch what they put out in a while. But everything I've heard, I liked, and I own a few releases. Uh, Naru also does uh, World Obliteration Records over in Japan. Um, Never got to meet him. I would like to meet him. Hells have done business with him for years. Seems like a really cool guy. Craig got to meet him over when Nunslaughter played them with him. I think that's is. I think I'm pretty sure Nuru's the one that brought Nunslaughter over there. It was because of him, and they stayed with Nuru. I'm pretty sure. I could be wrong on that. They could tell the story better, but I'm per from my memory, that's what it was. Harry's a really cool guy. Uh, but yeah, everything I heard by Butcher ABC and everything I own, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed. That was good. You know what I mean? So uh, that's a band. Yeah, if you guys don't know it, and if you like more like the grindcore shit. I recommend checking it out. Kind of can't go wrong. I never heard anything that sucked. You know, good, catchy, fucking just uh, grind. That's in the vein, like I said, of general surgery, et cetera. So, yeah, I can't go wrong with that. Well, that's it for this one, Nibbles. You know what to do? Comments, questions, concerns, as always. Put it in the goddamn fucking comments box, and I'll get them answered bright and fucking early as always. See you tomorrow. Later, goddammit.